how much each major division is worth horizontally. So we need to check the horizontal sweep rate control setting. This control sometimes is called the time per division control. In this example, the horizontal sweep rate control is set to 0.1 milliseconds per division. So that means each major division horizontally is worth 0.1 milliseconds. Our sine wave occupies 10 large divisions horizontally. 10 divisions multiplied by 0.1 milliseconds per division equals 1 millisecond. So the signal's period is 1 millisecond. This means it takes one millisecond for the sine wave to complete one cycle. The frequency of the sine wave is easily calculated by using the formula F equals one divided by T. So in our example, F equals one divided by one millisecond, or one divided by one times 10 to the minus three seconds. Therefore, the frequency of the signal is 1,000 hertz, or one kilohertz. Notice I can vary the amplitude of the signal without changing its frequency. If, for example, this signal were in the audible range of frequencies, varying the amplitude would be varying the loudness of the signal. But the pitch, or frequency, of the signal would remain constant. Without changing anything about the signal, we can change the horizontal sweep rate control setting. This results in compressing the waveform if the sweep rate is decreased. Even though the signal looks completely different at the various horizontal sweep rate control settings, you need to realize that the frequency is constant. We're just changing the way it's displayed by varying the scope settings. We're switching to progressively slower and slower sweep speeds. Here the sweep is disabled. This is a great way to measure peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of a sine wave. So just how do you measure the voltage of a sine wave? You need to set the vertical attenuator just like when measuring DC voltages. In this case, using a 1x probe, the vertical attenuator is set to 0.2 volts per division. If we were using a 10x probe rather than a 1x probe, we'd have to multiply the vertical attenuator setting by 10. Now each division is worth 2 volts per division rather than 0.2. There are three common sine wave voltage measurements, peak-to-peak, -peak, peak, and RMS or root mean square. In this example, we have eight divisions of vertical deflection from the uppermost positive peak of the waveform to the lowermost negative peak of the waveform. Since our vertical attenuator is set to 0.2 volts per division, and we have eight divisions of vertical deflection, this results in a 1.6 volt peak-to-peak -peak waveform amplitude. All we have to do is multiply eight divisions by 0.2 volts per division which gives us 1.6 volts peak to peak. The sine wave's peak voltage measurement is simply half of the peak to peak value, or from the center of the reference of the trace to the uppermost positive peak of the waveform. In this example, the sine wave's peak voltage is four divisions from the center reference ground trace. Four divisions multiplied by 0.2 volts per division gives us 0.8 volts peak. You can also measure the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the sine wave and divide it by two. The root mean square or RMS voltage of a sine wave is 70.7 percent of the peak voltage. To get the RMS value of a sine wave, multiply the peak voltage of the sine wave by 0 0.707. RMS is the equivalent DC heating value in a sine wave. You can consult an electronics textbook for more information about RMS calculations. To summarize RMS calculations of a sine wave, multiply the peak voltage by 0 0.707 to obtain the RMS value. To get back, take the RMS value and multiply it by 1.414 or the square root of 2 to get the peak voltage. Let's check and see how well you've mastered the material in the preceding section. Suppose the vertical attenuator is set to 0.5 volts per division and a 10x scope probe is connected. If the signal occupies five divisions vertically, what's the peak-to-peak -peak voltage? The choices are 
12 volts peak to peak, 50 volts peak to peak, 25 volts peak to peak, 0.1 milliseconds peak to peak. The correct answer is choice number three, 25 volts peak to peak. Try this one. If the horizontal sweep rate control is set to 0.1 milliseconds per division and a complete cycle of the sine wave occupies seven divisions, what's the signal's period? Your choices are 1 volt, 50 hertz, 0.1 hertz, or 0.7 milliseconds. If you selected choice 4, 0.7 milliseconds, you're correct. Try your hand at this one. What's the signal's frequency in the prior example? 50 hertz, 1,428.57 hertz, 1,000 hertz, or 1.414 volts peak to peak? If you selected choice 2, 1,428.57 hertz, you're correct. Try this one. If a sine wave measures 10 volts peak to peak, what is the RMS equivalent? Your choices are 1.414 volts RMS, 2.828 volts RMS, 3.53 volts RMS, or 1.414 hertz. If you selected choice 3, 3.53 volts RMS, you are correct. Here's another one. Which of the following probes has the smallest loading effect? Ordinary test probes, a 1x scope probe, a 10x scope probe, or a 50 ohm coaxial test lead? The correct answer is choice 3, a 10x scope probe. In case you've wondered, we've been using a function generator for producing all of our time-varying waveforms. There are many different models of function generators to choose from. There are, however, many ways to generate signals. Unfortunately, this subject content is beyond the scope of this technical training video. Consult an electronics text for more information. For this section, we'll use the Leader LS1040 High Performance Analog Oscilloscope. Let's first power up the instrument. The power LED illuminates, indicating the instrument is on. The backlight illumination switch allows us to select no backlight or choose from two levels of backlight illumination. Because we're in a well-lit room, we'll leave the backlight off. Advance the intensity control to make the trace visible on the screen. For the best measurement accuracy, keep the trace intensity down to the minimum level necessary. Using the focus control, adjust for the sharpest trace possible. Since this is a dual channel oscilloscope, we have two identical input coupling switches and two identical input B and C connectors. We're going to use the channel A input, and with it, channel A's vertical attenuator and vertical position controls. Rotating the vertical position control allows me to place the ground reference trace at any point on the screen. Here we've positioned it at the exact center of the screen. Don't forget to verify that the vertical attenuator variable vernier control is in the calibrate position. Otherwise, you'll affect measurement accuracy. We'll verify that the vertical mode switch is in the channel 1 position. We'll set the coupling switch to DC, the source to channel 1, and the slope to positive. We'll leave the horizontal sweep rate at 2 milliseconds per division for now. The horizontal position control allows us to position the trace on the screen horizontally. For now, let's just leave it in the center. I'll connect the scope probe to the channel A input. Because we're using a 10x scope probe, we need to compensate the probe. We use the CAL source provided internally by the oscilloscope.